Hello, my name is Michael Watson and I'm a composer and music producer and today we are celebrating... Wait, something went on my screen. This Mac can't connect. Okay, and today we're going to be doing a special edition video because we are 30% through the manual and I'm so proud of you guys for those who have been here from the start and have been following and I'm pretty proud of myself for like, you know, going through so many chapters. Um. Today I'm going to be teaching you some MIDI hacks, specifically when it involves working with scales. So I'm just going to like flip things around because it's a little awkward looking at the camera even though like my face is right here and I really want to look at me and like, ah, hello. Um, so yeah, okay, bye. Guys, I just watched that little intro hello thing and there's like spinach between my teeth. <laughs> Flipping awkward. But anyway, today I'm going to be talking about the scale function. Oh, if you are new, welcome. Um, usually my tutorials are super succinct and to the point, but this is a special edition video and so I'm a little bit more spammy than usual um, because it's a little bit more relaxed than usual. So you will learn something and if you are regular, welcome back. Well done for making it this far in the manual and um, I'm going to show you a little bit of MIDI hacking in the scale function. All right, so to get that go, First of all, have a MIDI track, go to instrument, choose an instrument. I chose this random source lead thing. And uh, now go to your browser, go to MIDI effects and choose scale. And um, let's just start with an empty one. Okay, so this is what your empty quote unquote scale function looks like. To explain this little thing to you, I drew something for you. It's really bad, but it's chilled. Um, yeah, that's the one, guys. So... If you have a look here, <laughs> excuse my, oh look, Picasso. Picasso was cool and his art looks a bit strange, right? Anyway, uh, just use your imagination a little bit. But how this works is this is your piano, this is your C note, your C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, and so forth. And um, the keyboard also works the other way where this is C, C sharp, D, and so forth. So these keys, I should have actually also drawn them on the side here. This is essentially a grid. It resembles the push a little bit. And um, so hopefully this this demystifies a little bit of it for you. Let's just close this. And basically what these orange boxes represent is they represent which note you will hear when you push the notes that it's on. So I've got my keyboard button here enabled. So I'm using my normal laptop keyboard. Okay, so I'm playing the note C over here. And uh, when I hit it, you saw this little orange thing go yellow and you can hear the C play. But now if I check this box or uncheck it rather and take the orange away and I play this key, you don't hear anything. And that's because I'm playing this button, but there is nothing orange anyway on this grid. So it's not playing anything. But if I put this note over here, I can be hitting to play the C, but it's going to be playing this here, which I think is a G sharp. So I don't want to give you a whole theory lesson, but the C major scale is a nice and simple. And if you look at the keyboard, the C major scale has only white notes in it. So if we were programming this thing from scratch and we knew that we were only allowed to hit white notes, then let's do this. All right, this grid here. It's got no, none of these black notes, so that's fine. If I hit it, I want to hear that note. Let's look at this line here. All right, this line here is your D sharp. When I hit the D sharp, I don't want to hear D sharp because D sharp is not in C major. So I either want to hear C or I want to hear D. So uh, let me hit D sharp. Hitting the same note. C, so let's get to the D here. If When I hit the D, I can hear D. Okay, so just note of warning, you can't place it down here. This is C again. As you move up vertically, you're also going to have to move up horizontally. So when you loaded this, you had this diagonal line. That was the chromatic scale. When I play a D sharp, I do not want to hear a D sharp. This is the note that you would be hearing. I either want to hear the semitone below, the D, or I want to hear an E. Okay, and this is what you keep doing. This here is note E. E is in C major, it's a white note, so I can hear it. F is in C major, so I want to hear it, which means I'm just going up. Hold on a second, got that wrong. F. All right, G sharp, not in C major. So I want to either hear the F again, or I want to hear the G. Let's go for F. 
G's and C major, G sharps, now let's hear the G again, G again, A, C major, B flats, not C major, I want to hear the A again, or of course you could decide to hear the C again, and then when I hit the octave, I want to hear the C again. So what I've just done here is created the major scale, which is the same as this major scale preset. So there should be a C major one in here somewhere. There we go, it's the same thing. So if you're playing on your keyboard now, and if you don't have a MIDI keyboard that's chilled, you can actually use your computer keyboard, just enable that. You can literally play whatever you want and it'll be in key. In fact, you can make up some really cool melodies by just doing that. This. Just gonna quantize that. Now I have a melody in C major and it was as easy as hitting whatever I wanted to as long as I had the scale function checked. Let's go back to the scale function. So down here you've got two tabs. This is your device view and this is your MIDI keyboard view. And you can switch between the two of them. And so in the device view you've got your scale function. So if you don't want to play in a major key you can also play in a minor key. Just drag the minor preset or program it from scratch. The cool thing here is it's got all sorts of scales that you might not think to use like the Hira Joshi scale. Boom! This is quite an inter interesting scale, as you can see. It's actually not even a typical octave scale. Well, obviously it's in an octave, but it's only got five notes, so it's probably a pentatonic scale. It's like a minor pentatonic type scale. Alright, so that's how to use the scale function. If you want to move all this up into D major, you don't have to reprogram everything. You can just transpose it by two semitones, because D is two semitones away from C. And uh, that's how that works. You can also set the range over here. To change the lowest note, you just click and you drag up or down. Another way you can do this transposition is by using this bass knob over here. Instead of transposing and using your brain, you can actually just be like, well, we're in the key of C now, and I just want to change it to F. And it literally moved everything up the grid so that it's visually correct, so that this here is your G, and this here is your A, and so forth. If you use the transposition function, you are transposing everything you hear, so I could just as well done the same thing by transposing up, but I mean, whatever floats your boat. You know, if you're just feeling like playing around in your DAW, why don't you make up your own scale by checking up random boxes and, uh... And I've made up my own scale. Now, there is another way that you can do something similar if you don't want to use this scale effect, but you still want to ensure that you're writing the right notes in. You can double click on your MIDI file, and this is a little hack. I'm just going to move this all along. On this side of the MIDI clip that's not being played, so remember these markers are showing you which part of the MIDI clip is being played, I'm just going to draw out a scale. I'm hitting B and I go C, D, B, F, G, A, B, C. Okay, and now I'm going to hit Fold. What Fold does, it hides all the notes that aren't being used. And as I said earlier, C major are all the white notes, so I've actually just ticked all these white notes, and Fold, all the black notes disappear, which means I can't actually hit any notes that aren't in C major when I write into my MIDI editor. And just like we randomly played a melody on the MIDI keyboard earlier with the scale function, now you can literally just randomly draw a melody in here with your pen tool. So if one says you want to have a pentatonic scale only, which is the black notes, write those in, fold it up, And now you've got your pentatonic. So that's a little hack for you. I hope that this helps you in your music making. If you do struggle with things like music theory and scales and you want a lesson on it, do let me know and I'll try and incorporate that into one of my future videos. But for now, I just wanted to show you these two little hacks of how to make sure that you are playing in the right key at all times. Thanks for watching. We'll be continuing with our series next week with chapter 11 and we will be proceeding with the second third of the manual. Thank you so much for your support so far. I've been really blown away with all the positive comments you guys have given me and it's such a joy to help you. So thank you so much for subscribing and liking and commenting and all those things. And I really do hope that I can help you more in the future. And if you want more content like this, please do subscribe and also hit that little notification bell so that you get notifications in your inbox when I post new videos if you have FOMO and you don't want to miss any of these. And you really should have FOMO because I'm awesome. Okay, thank you, bye.